And so, President Drew, I have 10 a.m. So with that, why don't we start our second broker update? All right, that sounds good, Nick. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, obviously, we like to get around the state in person as much as possible, and we uh, did that earlier this week uh, in Hilton Head, uh, met with some brokers there. Um, so we feel like we can reach more people sometimes by doing the webinars, uh, and they've been well received, so we appreciate you joining us here today. Uh, some things that uh, I've been tasked with going over uh, to talk about our 2020 strategic plan. Um, what we've done there is something that's very, very similar to this past year, 2019. Um, our incoming president, President-elect Owen Tyler, uh, held a strategic planning session uh, in Aiken uh, earlier this month and uh, had realtors from across the state that gathered um, to, to speak with him about our strategic plan uh, to kind of do a checkup on where we are this year uh, and the goals that we're reaching and where we want to go next year. So there's not a, a drastic change uh, in our strategic plan for next year. Uh, just to hit some of the quick highlights for you, uh, what we're looking to do is we're looking to, uh, one of our major pillars is professionalism. Um, last year when we started the strategic planning process, we looked at what can our state association provide for our realtor members that our local associations and our national association uh, are not uh, providing. So. That, that's one of the things that we're working to try to help increase. Uh, and you as brokers across the state, um, you play a very, very integral part in helping us raise professionalism. Uh, you guys, uh, in everything that you do, you can certainly be, be the example of professionalism, uh, but more importantly, you can help, cult help create a culture of professionalism uh, with your agents. So please work on doing that. Um, reward or, uh, or, or, or point out the things that are being done right, uh, but please just as importantly point out the things that are not being done right so we can help help to improve professionalism for the entire industry. Uh, another thing that we're working on is advocacy and uh, our uh, things at the State House. Uh, we're working with more grassroots efforts with our local associations. Uh, Lindsay is doing a fantastic job for us at the State House. You're going to see some uh, increased videos from her. Um, we're going to also include some increased videos from our legislators themselves. Um, so that's gonna be uh, probably most of the way that you're gonna be receiving information from her going forward. Um, there will be obviously some emails and some calls to actions and things like that, but we've, we found that uh, our click-through rates, uh, our time on the screen, all those things are much, much better with the videos. So uh, look for some more of those things that are gonna be coming up uh, next year. Um, another thing we're working is uh, on our strategic plan is local association support. Part of the strategic plan this year um, uh, in speaking about working with our brokers is we're going to travel some uh, as a state association we're going to travel to local associations help sponsor uh, some local broker updates uh, we're going to try to do it specific to the area because not always uh, folks in Charleston may not have the same needs and the same things going on in the realtor community as things are in Anderson so we're going to try to tailor those talks and those meetings to the to the specific areas where we're visiting. Um, good news uh, for all of us that uh, we've got to get the board of directors to approve uh, next month, but we are will be presenting to not increase uh, state dues uh, this this next year for 2020. Look uh, to remain at $140. Uh, a few highlights from that: um, we're projecting to have about 20,600 renewing members which is a one and a half percent drop uh, from our May renewal numbers. Uh, that's what NAR is projecting uh, nationally. Um, and we feel like that's a good number uh, that will help us to have a conservative budget for next year and make sure we're able to do all the things that we want to do. Hey Drew, uh, let, let me interrupt you there real quick. Uh, sure. yesterday, yesterday I attended the uh, monthly real estate commission meeting and they reported the new licensee numbers. And this was uh, kind of staggering. Uh, the last three months, they've added over 1,500 new licensees. That's 500 a month they've been averaging, uh, and, that, and that's almost been the trend for the last 12 months. Um, South Carolina, you know, the licensee numbers are, are kind of a lagging indicator of what's happening in the uh, economy. Um, uh, but at this point in the year, 
membership is still growing at a staggering rate. We're the, we're the 20th largest uh, realtor association in the country, um, and, the, and we continue to be uh, the sixth fastest growing. Um, so uh, I think it's prudent to budget on, uh, at a, con on a conserv very conservative uh, uh, way uh, so that we can be good stewards of our members' resources. Um, but uh, the, the numbers coming from the commission uh, are showing continued growth this year. So FYI to all the brokers out there. Great. Thanks, Nate, for that update. Um, and thank you again. I'm sure Nick will speak about this in a moment. But uh, for those of you don't don't know, Nick was uh, working with us in the Real Estate Commission uh, just yesterday. He took several members of the staff over uh, to meet with the Real Estate Commission on our behalf on several issues. And I'm sure he's going to update to uh, update you on shortly. Um, Getting back to some of the things that we've got going on, um, Lindsay and, and our team is, are going to be traveling locally as well. Um, we're going to be working on uh, ab local ag advocacy grassroots tour. Uh, that'll be happening in the fall of 2020. Um, what we're going to do there is try to speak with the brokerage community about things that are going on locally and try to work with you on things that you need us to help you with at the state house. Um, so try to, to, to get more input from you on things that we need to be doing. Um, we will be, um, the budget for the uh, bro broker, broker Summit has been uh, increased. Um, again, our focus is on our brokers um, this this year and this year coming up. So we're trying to get a more dynamic session going, uh, allowing better speakers to be hired. So look forward to information on that. We're really excited for that. Um, there will be next year a Region 4 annual conference in Savannah which is something that we have not done before. Well, take me back, Nick. I believe we did do it one time, uh, and Strom Thurmond was the guest speaker, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? It was uh, 1943, and Strom was actually governor. Uh, there you go. So uh, Region 4 meeting, that's South Carolina, North Carolina, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Uh, will be an annual conference in Savannah, uh, October 11th through October the 15th. And this is in 2020, so this is not, uh, not this year, so don't don't mark your calendars wrong, but uh, it's going to be an amazing event that's going to hopefully bring in uh, really high quality speakers, a lot of great educational opportunities for you and your agents. Uh, something that's going on new that most of you know, we took off uh, the year for the SCR uh, Leadership Academy. Uh, it, it was formerly known as Leadership SCR. We renamed it to the Leadership Academy. Uh, we've updated um, the course line uh, and things that we're doing in that uh, Leadership Academy. It's going to be really outstanding. Uh, some of the things that with a revised schedule is going to include sessions at the South Carolina State House, uh, Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. Uh, and we're excited to announce that uh, SCR past president David Kent will be chairman of the group this year and SCR past president Andy Walker will be the vice chair. So uh, we've got some amazing leaders that are stepping up um, to, to work with that group. Be on the lookout. I'm sure stuff's already started to go out, but be on the lookout for more things going on with registration for next year. Uh, it's going to be a great program. Let's see. We will be continuing our leadership training roadshow in January to help our local association start off the year on a great note, as well as the professional standards roadshow that is conducted by our SCR attorneys. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, Byron is, uh, for some reason, he's decided to go on a comedy tour. He thinks that he's a comedian now. Uh, so don't laugh at his jokes because it will only encourage him, um, and, and we don't need to encourage him to be a yeah, comedian. Please, please, uh, please do not encourage Byron. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I spoke briefly earlier about some of the things that you're going to be seeing. You're going to see a lot more video uh, emails, uh, inserts in our updates that, that come out. Um, we do think that things have been, been very good there. We can get a lot of information out uh, quickly in a video. One thing that we're uncertain about um, at SCR is the expansion of I-26 in Columbia. As you know, most of you know, our office is in the path of that expansion, uh, and we've been noticed, uh, have been notified that there is going to be um, some taking of our property at this point. We just don't know how much. Uh, SCR has uh, engaged outside legal counsel to help us through that process, um, and it is our plan to address the issue up front. Um, and hopefully to, to settle with DOT prior to any possible condemnation hearings or proceedings begin. So uh, that's in a nutshell what I've got, and uh, I'll turn it over to Nick to give some of his updates, and um, we'll look forward to answering some of your questions at the end. Awesome. Thank you, Drew. Um, 
I've got, uh, let's, let's shift from uh, some internal issues to some external issues. And let's start with Washington. August is the typical recess uh, time for Congress. Um, and we have an opportunity to meet and talk with our congressmen. I've attached uh, in your uh, control panel there, the August recess talking points. Um, NER uh, is focused obviously on flood insurance and uh, GSC reform. You know, those, uh, uh, it's a little deja vu, right? We, we talk about these things a lot, but we have to keep talking about them because um, they're so important to our members. Flood insurance expires again in September. And uh, unfortunately, it looks like Congress uh, will extend the program, but not improve or reform it. They're just gonna kick the can down the road for a few more months. Um, and our national staff tells us likely because of the 2020 presidential election, we don't anticipate any major uh, initiatives to pass. No, no party wants to give the other party a win during uh, the political season. But stay tuned. Uh, NAR is keeping uh, this issue on the forefront. Uh, thanks to uh, realtors from South Carolina that are uh, chairing and leading committees at NAR like Donna Smith. Um, we have uh, our voices being heard front and center in Washington on these issues. GSC reform uh, is uh, another similar issue. Lots of talk about getting government out of uh, this guaranteed mortgage business could result in, uh, I think, major harm to, especially to first time home buyers um, and uh, even traditional buyers uh, if the 30, rate, 30 year uh, mortgage product were to disappear as a result of uh, some radical reform. So that's another issue that, uh, need, that we need to stay on top of. The other, uh, the other reason that NER continues uh, these fights is because some of these issues do take a long time. And, and just this past week, uh, NAR announced the, uh, the new FHA condo rules, which have been finalized. And this was a 10-year effort on behalf of NAR, its supporters in Congress, uh, to get these, these rules loosened up. Uh, during the recession, um, they tightened up uh, the financing rules for condos, made it very difficult to, to, to finance a condo unit through FHA. Uh, they've loosened those um, uh, restrictions, and I think it will not only have a positive impact on the market, but also may help address some housing affordability issues in some of our key uh, high growth areas. Again, the condo rule talking points are attached to your um, outline today. Please take advantage of that, share that with your agents and share that with other realtors. Um, just uh, earlier this month, also uh, NAR uh, hosted our uh, annual leadership summit. And uh, this is where they bring in the incoming leadership for 2020 and uh, introduce them to all things NAR, the products and services, staff, and some incredible presentations were made this year. I've got two that are attached here to your um, uh, webinar today. And I'm gonna cover a couple of these real quickly. The first one uh, is the MLS uh, lawsuit update. Uh, NAR's uh, general counsel, Katie Johnson, uh, released uh, the latest update on the lawsuits. Uh, NAR has filed uh, a second motion to dismiss as a result of the amended complaint that the plaintiffs filed. Um, you know, he, uh, the, the, the plaintiffs the, that have been identified uh, are, are claiming that their, their, their home sellers are claiming that they're having to pay too much in real estate commissions because of the uh, antitrust that they claim is a result of NER's rules and, and policies. Um, I mean, even, even Kaki is shaking his head at, at uh, these uh, trial lawyers and their position on this issue. It is... Um, uh, something that's going to take a long time to, to, to resolve and a lot of money. Uh, but these talking points help us focus on what the real issues are here. And, and when you look at NAR's policies, they promote um, our, uh, the fact that you know, realtors are champions of, of home ownership and property rights. We live, work, and play in these various communities that we serve. 
the MLS com, uh, the MLS system um, and the way commissions are, are paid uh, not only create competitive marketplaces but efficient ones that benefit home buyers and sellers uh, and ensuring that that buyers uh, have the opportunity to to choose a buyer's agent uh, and to be represented in, in the single largest transaction they'll likely ever make in their lives. And it, and it also focuses on the fact that our realtor members are the critical experts, uh, are your neighborhood uh, leader on these issues uh, when it comes to real estate. So NAR's bottom line is the lawsuits are wrong on the facts, they're wrong on the economics, and they're wrong on the law. And uh, they're going to defend this uh, vigorously. Uh, so we'll see some more. It, it, this could be, I mean, this could be a 10 year, uh, uh, legal process. Uh, the judge in, in, uh, Illinois, uh, took three years to rule on a recent motion to dismiss in another case. Um, and that's not even, you know, that's before you get into discovery and depositions and, and God knows what else will take place. So, um, stay tuned and uh, make sure that that you get your updates from NAR. There's there's a few podcasts out there and some some very very uh, what I call nasty negative um, uh, uh, opinions that are that literally are uh, seem to be pulled out of thin air and not based on facts or or legal principles. Uh, so check out um, and make sure that you always have the, the latest update uh, from, from NAR. A little bit closer to home. Uh, oh, one last thing from uh, NAR. The uh, Lawrence Yoon's uh, economic forecast, uh, his most recent copy is attached as well to uh, uh, the webinar. And interestingly enough, his, his forecast for next year is showing a slight growth, not only in new home sales, but existing home sales as, as well. Price appreciation is going to continue to climb, and he sees a, a very stable uh, mortgage rate uh, staying right around 4% uh, through the end of, of next year. Now, he did have one caveat to, to his uh, forecast, and that's uh, the assumption that the, the, the administration, President Trump, secures the, the trade agreements with China and these other countries, so those don't trigger other economic problems uh, uh, across the country. But assuming those take place, uh, Lawrence Yoon predicts uh, a good 2020 for us. So let's talk about a couple of things a little closer to home. As Drew mentioned, uh, we uh, were at the Real Estate Commission meeting yesterday, and I've got to give credit to uh, Lindsey Jackson and, and especially Austin Smallwood, our, our staff attorney, who attends every single Real Estate Commission is our I, every single commission meeting and is our eyes and ears um, uh, with all of our regulatory bodies. And uh, it's Austin who sits through, you know, the, the, the day long meetings yesterday, they didn't finish till after five o'clock um, after a day long of hearings and disciplinary matters. And, uh, but the commission was uh, um, uh, generous in giving me some time on the agenda yesterday to address a few issues. Probably um, uh, one of the uh, uh, best meetings that, that we've had, in, in, uh, as well as addressing, I think, some key issues. And so let me cover these really quickly and, um, and see if you've got any questions. The first issue we've seen out in the marketplace, there are these individuals that are, that are wholesaling real estate contracts. And by that, I mean they're approaching uh, homeowners, uh, getting offer, making offers, getting contracts of sale with no intentions of closing on the property, but with every intention of flipping that contract and trying to get a, a better buyer uh, secured. Um, there have been these kind of national uh, programs that people have been attending, and um, I, I don't know what they're called, but you've probably seen them in your communities. Um, and these folks are out on the street. Uh, advertising for this kind of business. And what happens is the, the, the seller shows up at closing, realizes his property's now just been flipped for more money than what he's getting, and the consumers are being kind of hoodwinked in, in all of this. Um, the, the problem that we see is that in many cases that have been brought to our attention, the, 
the um, uh, the folks that are doing the flipping and wholesaling are not licensed to practice real estate. And when you advertise and hold yourself out to the public um, to buy and sell homes, that's the very definition of what a real estate salesperson or broker is. And we asked the commission yesterday to address this issue head on, be proactive, uh, issue a warning uh, so that uh, our members and that the public can also uh, feel confident in filing complaints to get cease and desist orders to stop these people from preying on uh, unsuspecting uh, property sellers. The second issue is uh, uh, very timely as we're in the, the beginnings of uh, the hurricane season uh, here in, in South Carolina, and that has to do with flood insurance claims, specifically FEMA claims um, that owners uh, have to make during these times uh, when their properties are damaged, when uh, federal disaster uh, areas are, are declared in South Carolina. We've had that happen now each four years in a row. And on our seller disclosure form, it doesn't address FEMA claims. And let me explain why that's important. For uh, under federal law, uh, there's there are several rules under the National Flood Insurance Program that basically says um, if, if you have three uh, or more FEMA flood claims, you get kicked into a, a higher rate for your insurance premiums. And, and there are circumstances where you may get kicked out of the program altogether. So a unsuspecting buyer uh, purchases a property, uh, has to make a flood claim due to a storm at some point in the future, and discovers that there had been two previous flood claims, or maybe more. And then suddenly their insurance skyrockets to the point where they can't it, it takes them out of their budget and, and creates financial distress for that buyer. Under federal law, believe it or not, uh, that buyer cannot uh, find that information out on their own. They can't call FEMA and ask. It's uh, prohibited to share that information under federal law. I want to give a shout out to Senator Tim Scott, who's got uh, a proviso in multiple bills uh, pending in Congress that would, that would fix that. Uh, but as of right now, it's still illegal. And so what we asked the commission yesterday was to include a FEMA claim question on the flood disclosure form. And this won't solve everything because there may be FEMA claims that have been filed before the owner uh, owned the property, but this will at least address the ones that the owner knows about and gives the, sell, gives the buyer a little bit more information uh, to make informed decisions. So going Nick, is forward, there, is there a timeline on that? Excuse, is there a timeline on that as far as notification, or is it like uh, if it's flooded three times in the past hundred years, or is there a, 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 a dedicated timeline where that, that those flooding must occur? My understanding, Drew, is that it's if any FEMA claim ever. So there there is no there is no expi expiration date, I guess, on those claims. Um, and uh, going forward, I I, I don't. I, my understanding there is there isn't any kind of grandfathering or time frame uh, on those issues. And if um, those of you in Charleston uh, saw the, the headline news story that ran last month uh, that talked about this very issue and, and, and buyers not being able to access this information. Um, the Real Estate Commission was very uh, uh, responsive uh, and uh, I believe that they will address this issue by their next uh, meeting, either September or October. So the last issue that we brought to their attention yesterday was dealing with the ever popular licensee nickname issue. Um, as you know, uh, state law says you can't conduct real estate business under any other name uh, or address other than, other than the one that's listed on your license. Um, and for, Many of our members, many licensees out there, uh, their entire brand is built around their nickname and uh, having to change uh, business cards and advertising and, and whatnot uh, is an extraordinary expense uh, for a situation where uh, I asked the question yesterday, has, has a member of the public ever filed a complaint uh, because uh, of a realtor or a licensee using a nickname? Um, and they've never received one. And, and so the, the issue for the commission is that the public needs to be able to search and find a licensee. 
So the solution that we presented, which is similar to what many, many states have in place around the country, is to either uh, create a licensee nickname field in the database. So when you renew or apply for a new license, you register basically your nickname with the commission, making it searchable and findable. Um, or in the alternative, uh, when you use a nickname, that you also uh, you also include your real estate license number, uh, which would be a definitive way of, of looking somebody up. Either way creates some flexibility for our members. The commission was uh, 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 very, very uh, um, in tune with this issue. They've been receiving uh, uh, more complaints about this issue than anything else in, in the last few months. And I feel very, very confident that they will be addressing this and providing us uh, some, some relief and, and really just injecting some, some common sense into the process. They, they heard us on the issue and I believe they're gonna fix it. Um, the, uh, and, and I wanna give a shout out and, and pay my respects to Chairman Candy Pratt from Charleston and all the members of the commission uh, yesterday who uh, gave us time and, and listened to our concerns and, and uh, I think we'll address these issues. One, one interesting note, um, you know, the, the, uh, when I was doing my research on this nickname issue, um, uh, the Texas Association allows you to register uh, nicknames. And I don't have the form right in front of me. I'd, I'd hold it up and show it to you. But on their form, uh, their registration form, uh, they allow a licensee to register up to 11 nicknames. They call them alternate names in Texas. Um, and I guess Texas is so big <laughs> that they've got to have this. But uh, you could in Texas, you could register, you know, Mr. Real Estate Jones or, you know, Big Hat, uh, you know, Smith. I mean, I, I don't know what they do with 11 names, but um, I, I did uh, uh, concede to the commission that that was excessive and probably not in the best interest of, of uh, what we need in South Carolina. But um, so I, I felt very positive. Um, and again, I, I give a lot of credit to Austin and, and Lindsay that lay the groundwork for this. I just showed up at the meeting yesterday and, and read the talking points, but uh, they're the staff that do all the, uh, the grunt work with uh, our, our, our elected officials and appointed officials and wanted to give them a lot of credit. So let me switch gears. I got two last things. Uh, we're going to try to wrap up our session here at 10:30. Allow some time for Q and A. Before you uh, before you leave the real estate commission, uh, why don't you discuss the uh, the addition of some investigators? Oh, okay. Um, as they were reporting uh, their budget yesterday, the commission made a an announcement that was very well received. That they're adding three new staff, and as you know, the the commission has very few staff to begin with. And the addition of three staff is uh, is a huge uh, uh, increase in in, in service, um, and they're going to be uh, using these staff uh, to help implement the the criminal background check rules that go into effect next year, and also to uh, uh, start looking at uh, in additional audits of real estate firms. Uh, specifically, they mentioned CE audits yesterday, um, and so that's very encouraging news. Um, we've got as an association to make sure that our commission has the resources, the tools, the staff uh, to, to really weed out the bad apples in our industry. And if you've never sat in on a hearing at the Real Estate Commission, I, for one, I hope you're never a party to one, but if you're in the business long enough, eventually somebody will file a complaint against you. But I would encourage all of you to spend one day and, and listen to what the commissioners have to listen to. I mean, they really see the worst of the worst in our industry, and uh, uh, they 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 do an incredible job, and and we thank them for for their service. So, uh, a couple of industry news items that I wanted to share with you: SkySlope. Uh, there's a lot of changes in the form vendor space over the last few months. The most recent one this week, uh, SkySlope, which is a management uh, platform has um, uh, cut off its uh, relationship with ZipForm, and they're creating their own forms uh, management program. 
that affects, I know a lot of companies, uh, uh, particularly on the coast of South Carolina, but I know there are others that use SkySlope as well. And uh, DocuSign, I wanted to announce that we've, uh, uh, this week we've signed uh, an agreement with uh, DocuSign, uh, you know, the digital signature company. They also now have, uh, are in the forms management space. Um, and of course, we've got our ongoing relationships with DotLoop and with uh, ZipForm, of course, which has been our traditional uh, vendor for a long time. Next year, these changes could uh, accelerate. Uh, NAR will be uh, deciding whether or not to uh, keep ZipForm as a member service. We'll find out in May when they uh, present their budget for 2021. But at least through 2020, th until December of next year, South Carolina and NAR uh, will continue to offer ZipForm and its, ancillary, and its connected services uh, a as a member uh, service and member benefit. And the last item I wanted to, to show you, uh, by participating in the webinar today, um, you're getting first look at this. Uh, it's attached uh, again to the webinar. This is our uh, new economic impact study uh, that uh, in detail explains uh, and, and statistically shows uh, what the real estate industry's impact is on South Carolina's economy. Uh, it's incredibly um, impressive, and I think you'll, you'll love these numbers and you'll be able to, sh to, sh to use them uh, in your business. And also, importantly, uh, an element of the, of the study is showing what percentage of business our realtor members do overall compared to other licensees. And I'm going to uh, uh, save you the suspense uh, but the numbers look really, really good. Um, yesterday, the commission reported that there were 44,000 active licensees. Uh, we have almost 24,000 realtor members, just over half of the population uh, in the industry. And our members uh, conduct 80, 84, uh, almost 85 percent of all the transactions in the state. That's an incredible number. It proves, it shows conclusively that if you're in the profession of real estate and uh, earning a living in real estate, that you are a realtor member. So something to be proud of and something to brag about as we go forward. Um, I, I showed a preview of it to the Real Estate Commission yesterday as well, and we'll be releasing this study uh, as early as next week uh, to the membership. Uh, we'll be doing a press release. Hopefully you'll see it in your local media uh, and newspapers. So Drew, it's uh, 10.32. Uh, let's open it up for any questions uh, anybody might have. Let me uh, open up the dashboard here and see. Does, any, does anybody have any questions for either Drew or I? You can chat them. Let's see. And while we're uh, while we're waiting on some of those questions, that study was something that that you know just kind of came up came about uh, in a conversation that Nick and I were having, and and I'm glad Nick picked it up and, and ran with it. Um, totally amazing to the work that they've done here at the state for us. But you know we we always talk about how much work the realtors do, but we never really had any information to to back that up. So uh, Nick was able to engage uh, some folks to do a great study for us, um, and uh, looking forward to all you guys having the opportunity to review it. Great. We have a, a question from Michelle. She asks, is there a charge with DocuSign? Uh, DocuSign is not being provided as a member service. Um, you, there is a charge for their DocuSign product. Um, they do have a, a member level uh, form management as part of that, of that package. Um, the benefit is that if you use DocuSign for your forms management, you'll have the latest up-to-date and current forms uh, from SCR. And uh, Carol asks, uh, is the webinar going to be recorded? Uh, it is being recorded um, and will be posted later uh, today on our YouTube channel. It's uh, YouTube, uh, slash, youtube.com slash SC Realtors. If you see on your screen, um, one element of professionalism that NAR has tried to tackle head on 
uh, is through their new Commitment to Excellence program. Um, this is a uh, online, uh, at your own pace uh, type program, but it's different than a lot of the online training I know that I've taken in the past. I've encouraged, uh, and we have, uh, I'm proud to say that all SCR staff um, have completed uh, the program and have been endorsed by C2EX. And I would encourage you, uh, especially for uh, new agents that you're onboarding into your company, um, I know you can't make them take this, but make them take this. It is a, uh, a great introduction, not only to uh, the real estate business, but it's a better introduction to the Realtor Association. Uh, so I would encourage you to, to pass the word on and, and share that with your folks. The neat thing about it for you guys is it's interactive. Uh, it adjusts based upon the needs and the answers um, as people go. So if you need more help uh, in a certain area, it feeds you more information uh, in that area. So it's a, it's a really great program, very well designed. Uh, Beth, Beth uh, she writes in and says, C2X is better than great. Um, <laughs> thanks, Beth, for being C2EX endorsed. Do we have any other questions? I don't see any. Uh, so, Drew, why don't we um, wrap this up? Uh, all of you know how to email me. Uh, I can certainly forward emails to Drew. Drew, why don't you tell everybody your email address real quick? Uh, the easiest way is dstreet at gardencityrealty.com, D-S-T-R-E-E-T-T at GardenCityRealty.com. Um, a couple of quick announcements just to make sure that you guys know, you know that we have our um, our conference coming up here in a couple of weeks, already sold out. Uh, so I hope that you had your tickets uh, and are planning on attending uh, in Charleston. Um, we've got, I don't know, Nick, you can help me with the dates here, the RPAC uh, clay shoot uh, coming up in a um, couple of weeks, I believe. Oh, geez, you put me on the spot. Um... Uh, in addition to that, I'll give you another one to start looking at while you're doing it, um, is we've got our uh, Tech Edge conference coming uh, in October, uh, which is going to be in Columbia, which is going to be pretty great as well. Yeah, the, the Tech Edge is a, actually, it's an NAR event. Um, they've chosen Columbia as one of the host cities. They only do this in a few places around the country. That's October 17th. And uh, if you see on our website, screaltors.org, you'll see uh, where you can click and register. That's extremely limited seating. Um, I expect that to be sold out uh, before the end of August. So please, if you're interested, uh, go ahead and share that with your with your members, with your agents. And the um, RPAC clay shoot is October the 24th. Uh, it's a fundraiser for RPAC uh, down in Edgefield County. And if you're into sporting clays, uh, it's a it's a great event, and, and even if you're not, uh, we'll, we'll have some great uh, catfish and uh, some great networking and information about our pack uh, that evening. So please come out and join us. It's for a good. And that's the day uh, the day after my birthday. So if you forget to mail me my birthday present uh, prior, you can just give it to me at the uh, clay shoot, and I'd appreciate that very much. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, you guys are um, who we're trying to focus on. We're trying to make sure that. We give you the information, the tools that you need to do what you do and help our realtors to be better across the state. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon. And uh, we'll be hosting a final uh, broker update with Drew later in October. So stay tuned for that. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Have a great day.